Vítajte pri druhej časti našej diskusnej relácie s kabíny s trénerom Nestorom El Maestrom. Dnes sa pozrieme na jeho doterajšiu kariéru pred Spartakom Trnava. Takže v našom štúdiu ešte raz vítam Nestor El Maestra. Thanks for having me. Now let's look for your career before Spartak Trnava. When you was young and when you started your uh, trainer career, you worked in West Ham and Austria Vien. So uh, what did you do in these clubs? and in which categories you work in this club? I was working with, um, with the smallest of kids because you must remember I started working when I was, I think, 17. Yes, okay. So, no, I wasn't the head coach of West Ham United <laughs> at 17. Um, it was a, a part-time job um, in their academy and I can't remember exactly if this was the under eight or the under 10, but I know Um, these were small kids um, and I worked there, I didn't work there for long, I worked there for maybe three or four months, maybe six, I'm not sure. Um, and like I said, this was a part-time job, two or three times a week. I think they paid me something. <laughs> um, and then I uh, moved to Vienna um, because Vienna was always a kind of second home at least for my for my family I knew the city I've mm -hmm. spent some time there before it wasn't a, a completely strange place to me and uh, because they offered me a full-time position where I could um, you know start some kind of normal life living from what I'd always wanted to do um, with a normal salary where you know I could pay for an apartment and not be hungry. Um, so that's why I went to Austria Vienna, yeah. Okay, until 2005 you worked in a famous Spanish club, Valencia uh, CF. What did Spanish football give to you? A lot, I think. Um, again, I, I, um, I went to Spain not because of Spanish football, but because of my personal position within the club. Um, I was happy at Austria Vienna where I worked for almost two years um, and I went to Valencia because they offered me a more important job within the youth academy. Um, you know this youth football world is not too dissimilar to the professional world. The motivation to change clubs Um, is exactly the same. It's because you want to be more important or you want to go from a smaller to a bigger club. Um, it's just for less money, but it's, it's the same principle. So that's why I went there and uh, had a fantastic two years in Spain. Um, learned the language, which is, I think, important. It's helped me since then. There's obviously a lot of Spanish-speaking pe uh, people in European football, so it's a big help. Um, and I saw a different way of doing things. Now, I don't like to exaggerate too much the importance of Spanish football because they were so successful recently. Um, on the professional level, I think football everywhere is coming closer together. It's getting more and more similar. Um, I think you can still talk about typically German football or typically British football or typically Spanish or typically Dutch football, yes, but the differences are getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. In 2006, you got a live chance. You started work in uh, Schalke 04 with uh, Mirko Slomka. At first season where you work in Schalke, you finished on second position in Bundesliga only two points after Weibau Stuttgart but eight points before Bayern Munich, so it must, be it must be fantastic season. Yeah, that whole year was a little bit of a blur to me and I regret that because when you're there you don't really stand back and enjoy the moment so much. It was, everything was, was very new and very exciting and that was just, you know, working and going to games and coming back but never really taking anything in. Um, and now looking back at it, it was... Uh, spectacular season. We had a very, very good team. Um, we had some very good young players also come through the academy into the first team that year. Um, and uh, 
we were, I don't know, somehow unlucky not to win the Bundesliga in my first season in Schalke. Don't forget that Schalke is a huge, huge club um, who have never won the title. Yes, I know. Um, and we were very close. We not only finished only two points behind, but we were, I'm not exactly sure, but I think three or four games before the end of the season, we were three or four points in front. Um, and to have given that away was very disappointing. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. I think if we had won the, the league there, I think I would still be there. Maybe with a small statue. No, my boss would have gotten a statue, but I think we would have stayed there maybe for 10 years after. Because whoever manages to win the Bundesliga with Schalke, he will be a... Legend. Big, big hero to many thousands of people and it will be very difficult to leave afterwards. Yes, in the next season you played in group stage of Champions League, of course, and uh, you finished second in the, your group. And after that you uh, lost in the quarterfinal against FC Barcelona, so it must be perfect uh, for you, played in Champions League against one of the biggest clubs in the world. Yeah, like I said, you know, I was, I was very young. Um, I was like 23, 24 maybe. Like me now. You know, and I was uh, in all of these fantastic places and these big games and you're playing, you know, at the new Camp against Ronaldinho or you're playing Stamford Bridge against Drogba and all the other guys. Um, but I, I hope to be back there again sometime with some team because I didn't really feel the moment enough. Um, it's very easy to get used to positive things in life um, for players and for coaches. And um, it's very easy to, to, um, to become a little bit arrogant, like, uh, you know, Today we're playing at Stamford Bridge, but it's not such a big deal because next week we play them again at home and you know you think this will never stop and this will always be like this. Um, so yeah, with hindsight, maybe I should have enjoyed it a little bit more. Yes, in year 2010 you started working again with Mirko Slomka in Hanover. At first season you and Mirko sailed Hanover in the Bundesliga, the first half season in year 2010. Uh, after your experience with Schalke in Champions League, it must be hard working at club, in club uh, which is in, on bottom of the league. Um, yes, a different situation, obviously. A different kind of pressure. I'm not sure what is a bigger pressure when you're at Schalke and there's this constant um, need to win every game um, or where you're at a club who is in the relegation zone and you're fighting for your Bundesliga lives and um, you're always one or two games away from getting sacked because everybody's very nervous and there's um, a bigger responsibility because when a, when, a, when, when a club gets relegated from the Bundesliga to the second division, the money is much, much smaller. And uh, for many um, people working in the club, their lives change a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure what is a bigger kind of pressure. You know, when you're in the relegation zone, when you win, you can relax for a week or two because you're a direct... Uh, opponents are also losing all the time, you know, so if you win yes. you're three points in front and then you know that they're probably lose, you know, there's, there's always three or four, three or four teams fighting uh, not to get relegated. Um, and when you're in a, in a big club where you're trying to finish top three or top two or whatever, you win but there's no relaxing, you have to win the next game and the next game because everybody else is also winning all the time. So in terms of pressure, I don't know, but Hanover was the place where I think I became a real coach. Um, everything before then was working in the youth, 
So it's a good basis, obviously, but it's very different to professional football. And Schalke was a fantastic experience um, and a successful time. I was there for two years, but I was very young, um, taking things for granted. I think I did my job well, um, but it was different. You know, after Schalke, I wasn't working for a year and a half. And yes. uh, mm. I understood that when you get your chance to be at such big clubs, you really have to have to use it. I understood the reality of being a coach that, you know, sometimes it's difficult to find the job. Um, and I was older um, and I felt also more important. I'd, my role had grown a little bit. These four years in Hanover, which um, although we were fired at the end, but everybody gets fired, um, stay as the most successful spell that the club has ever had. Um, these four years is where I became a coach, I think. Yes, of course, because uh, in season 2010-2011, this season is the best season in Hanover history. You finished on first posi uh, fourth position in Bundesliga, so you and Mirko must be satisfied with this season because a year ago you was in relegated pos relegating position. Sure. Um, I'll give you a better statistic. We were in Hanover from January 2010 to January 2000 and or to December 2013, 13, so yes. almost exactly four years, but three full seasons. Yes. Second half of one season, three full seasons in the first half of, the, of, 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 of our last season. So we started and finished three seasons. And if you look at the end points of Hanover in their Bundesliga history, the three years where they had the most points were these three. Nobody else before or after managed to get as many points in the Bundesliga like Mirko Slomka in his worst full season, not in his best. These 60 points which we had in yes. 2011, this will never happen again, yes. maybe in 20 years. Um, but also in his worst season where people were unhappy and critical, this is still better than the best performance of any other coach in the Bundesliga. But football is strange like this and expectations change and um, it's not always positive when you have a fantastic result because people expect you to keep repeating it even though maybe it's unrealistic mm -hmm. um, but yeah we had some fantastic times there after this season you play in Europa League and uh, you beat Sevilla in the playoff you promoted from group stage and you was passed to quarter final against Atletico Madrid so after a few years uh, again you play in the quarter final of European competition against Spain club and again lost? Yeah, um, this was Hanover 96 played two times in Europe and both times under Mirko Slomka. Yes. Also something that people forget. Um, <laughs> yeah, this especially the first year was, was very special because it was the first time ever and um, I remember these games quite well. I don't remember a lot of games, but I remember these games against Sevilla, for example, very well. Um, we had just played an unbelievable season with uh, 60 points. And at the beginning of the season, people were expecting us to get relegated, to be honest. We were close to getting the sack. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so we had to play this playoff. And... Uh, I remember waiting to see who we were going to play and when they drew Sevilla against us, I thought this is unfair, this is <laughs> ridiculous because as you know, when Sevilla plays the Europa League, usually they win the whole competition, yes, not just course. the playoff. Um, and these are, 
well, maybe the two most exciting or the two biggest games that Hanover has ever played and we were fantastic and we managed to win this and this created a kind of euphoria in the city um, for these Europa League games um, which is unusual you have to understand that in the big West European leagues the Europa League is not so exciting yeah yes in I know. England for example nobody cares nobody watches this they think of it as you know almost like the Intertoto Cup if you remember yes before yes, and yes, also yes. in Germany it's not a big thing after the quarter final or the semi final okay people get interested but um, in Hanover they really lived this Europa League and we played very well and um, in the end, we lost to Atletico Madrid. And again, people were disappointed um, because, you know, this expectations grow. But, you know, a few years later, you see that we lost, um, first of all, to the team that won the whole competition. And um, second of all, to Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid with Falcao and Godin and all these guys who continued to play fantastic football and have big successes. Yes. Seasons when you work in Hanover, like you said, was the best in the club history. So uh, you must have good memories for this period of career. Sure. Um, you know, when you start somewhere, you don't really know what's, what to expect. Um, by the way, through all of these questions, bear in mind that I wasn't the coach of Hanover or of Schalke. I was just yes. the right-hand man. I was just the assistant. Um, I lived every moment and I think I was important there, but Mirko Slomka was the, was the coach. I was, I was just an assistant, but I can talk about my experiences. Um, what was the question? <laughs> How do you remember your... Um, positively, Hanover is a nice place. It's, uh, it's, it's not too big. It's like, it's bigger than Bratislava, but it's not too big. <laughs> um, it's, it's not a city in Germany which people would call beautiful. Um, you know, no tourists come to Hanover. Yes, yes. It's not Hamburg, it's not Düsseldorf or Munich. Um, but I really enjoyed my life there um, and I visit quite often. I think I'm going next week for, for a day. Um, you need this luck that you, you, know, you find a good group of players and somehow the cohesion works, somehow the atmosphere starts to build and people start believing in in the system and the process and liking each other and wanting to work with each other and if you have the luck that you win a few games um, then you can have a good season um, but overall that's where I felt the most at home and um, as a coach you know usually you're very bitter after you get fired um, it's a universal truth and everybody who tells you different is lying. When they fire you, you want the worst for them. You say, okay, this is my club, but really you want them to lose every game because it's, you know, it's a very personal thing when they say things are going badly and it's your fault, you are responsible. Um, and so I felt like this a few times because I've been fired more than once. Um, but Hanover is a club where you know, after a few years, I can say, I like this club and I really wish them the best. And I now, you know, four or five years later, I really like it when Hanover wins. Okay, uh, you're working in Hanover, like you said, finished in December 2013. Why after four years? Um, because we uh, we didn't manage to play so far above realistic expectations you know the budget stays the same it's very difficult without you know 
a Russian oligarch or a sheikh to change the financial profile of your club. Um, and although money is not everything in football, and although there are many examples where um, teams with less money have won against teams with more money, it's the only constant uh, parameter for performance. The only real correlation that success has to anything is money, because Real Madrid will always, always be more successful than Atletico Madrid. Yes, regardless money. of if they work well or poorly, regardless of if Atletico always make the correct decisions with buying players and have the best coach in the world for a year or maybe two, they can play on the same level. But over a long period of time, it's impossible for Atletico to be bigger than Real because the financial parameters are different. And Liverpool and Manchester United will always be the big clubs in England, along with, along with uh, Chelsea and Arsenal and Manchester City, who have the Sheikhs and the Oyogachs. Um, you can't change this reality. Um, when you do, however, people expect you to repeat it. Um, so when in the following season or two years later you start playing normally yes. where you were before, uh, people are somehow very dissatisfied. Um, this has happened many times before. Um, my personal experience or Mirko's experience wasn't nearly as dramatic as uh, Claudio Ranieri, for example. Why did he get fired? Because suddenly he played like Leicester City always play. Yeah, it was 12th or 13th in the table. Yes, I and they fired him. And then the next guy comes and he's going to finish 12th or 13th and everyone's going to say, fine, this is, this is the reality. But you know, people, football is very emotional. That's why we got fired. Okay, after that, so you have uh, one more job in Bundesliga in Hamburger SV. Uh, you must play relegated playoff against uh, Greuther Fürth. Yes. Uh, it must be very hard after the successful seasons in Hanover. Look, it wasn't my decision to make because, again, I wasn't the big boss. And um, after so many years with Mirko, of course, we talk about everything. I have something to say, but it's not my decision. Yes. And when my boss tells me we're going to Hamburg, we go. Okay. Um, it wasn't the right decision. Because um, we'd just been fired from Hanover. Um, and people knew that we did a fantastic job there yes. for four years. And uh, Mirko had a very good standing in Germany and in the Bundesliga. And I think all the jobs which vacated in 2014, he would have been maybe the candidate number one. So we could have waited and picked, I think, everything except for Bayern. Um, At the time, we didn't know that Hamburg was the club that it is now. Everybody knows that with Hamburg, it's something doesn't work. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is yes, really a big, big club, massive club. Something is not right. Um, after we left Hamburg, I think four or five coaches have played four or five years which are exactly the same and you're fighting to stay in the Bundesliga with a big traditional European club. Yes, next um, season we, he yeah. must play again, uh, relegated playoff. Sure. And, um, we can go into the reasons why this is but we'll need a new, <laughs> a, a, a new show but anyway at the time, we didn't really know, and you know, it's, it's 
one of the biggest clubs in Germany and one of the biggest cities in Germany. And when they call you, you usually say yes, but it was a mistake. Nevertheless, we didn't get relegated, um, which was good. And the season after, as is normal in Germany, three games, one point, go home. It happened again yesterday in the second division with Ingolstadt, I think, three games finish. People are very nervous all the time. Um, you work in uh, Hamburg only a few months. And uh, after this, uh, you don't have worked for two years. Why? Um, because that's how it is for many reasons it's not that I could I could have worked straight away if I wanted to but when you're coming from Hamburg um, I was there for six months and but when you're coming from seven or eight years Bundesliga you have certain financial ideas in your head it's one I didn't need to work um, just for money um, and the truth is it took a long time to get the right kind of offer um, I was thinking about starting as head coach somewhere after Hanover I felt ready um, but then Hamburg came very quickly. I was on holiday and, you know, start, okay. Um, you know, the, the working as a coach is a lot more intense than people imagine, I think. Um, and when you get fired, after the first feeling, which is usually anger or, you know. Yes. Um, the next feeling for me at least is relief because you can relax for a little bit um, and you go home after, you know, this very intense time and, you know, at least in the big leagues when you get fired, they usually pay you well. That's when you make the most money. So you go with a nice big check, you go home. Um, and for a month or two, you can just relax, yeah. And I think, I think I needed this, first of all. Um, and then you start thinking about, okay, you know, at some point I should start working again. And um, I think I got, I got fired in September. So around November, I'm thinking, okay, you know, in December something will happen. Um, you start calling a few people, letting them know, okay, I'm ready to start work again. Um, and I found that it wasn't very easy to um, find the right club to start my head coaching career. Um, I had some offers but it didn't feel right um, and when you're not getting paid a lot of money everything else must be right you understand mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, for a long time I didn't work in, 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 in football and when I couldn't take sitting at home any longer um, I, I, I took the job at Austria Vienna um, which I could have taken earlier um, and I didn't regret it, I had a very good time there with Torsten Fink. All these years when you work in Bundesliga you work with Mirko Slomke, like you said, <laughs> big boss. So how is that person for you? Mirko? Yes. Mirko is a very nice guy. Um, like I said, I think uh, next Friday I'm flying to Hanover to visit him. Um, I'll be there for a day. I haven't seen him in a, in a, in a long time. Um, he's a fantastic guy. Um, I have 
I owe him a lot, obviously, because yes, you need quality um, to work where I've worked. And yes, it's a business. Um, he took me because I did a very important service for him. And I understand that this is how he thinks or how everybody thinks. It's a, it's, it's a business like any other. Um, but not too many people would have trusted me when he did um, and given me the start at such a big club when I was only 23 years old with some experience, but not enough for this job. Um, and, you know, privately, we are still big friends, uh, fantastic guy. He's fallen a little bit victim to this new trend of the modern young coach, which is um, like you. which is very big, especially in Germany. Um, you know, a few years ago, if somebody had told you the head coach of Schalke is going to be, I don't know, 30 years old with 11 games professional football experience, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have thought um, it's serious. Uh, I'm not judging whether this is right or wrong. In some cases, it's worked fantastically, and in other cases, it's been an absolute disaster. Um, <laughs> but this is the way things are going. Um, and so a lot of the older, more established German coaches, um, and Mirko is not the only example. We've got people like Armin V, for example, who was Bundesliga champion with, with, with Stuttgart and coached many teams, uh, many coaches. Um, are finding it more difficult to get the big jobs um, and are not working a lot because you have to understand psychologically when you've been head coach of big teams, A, you don't need money and B, you are reluctant to accept the little jobs, you know. So um, yeah, he's not working at the moment, so we'll have some time to spend together next weekend. Okay, so uh, like you said, in September 2016, you agree uh, Austria Vienna and you work with Torsten Fink this year. So how was the year for you in Austria? Um, privately, it was the best year that I've had because you know that I live in Vienna. My home is, has been Vienna for many years. Um, and I had the wonderful opportunity, which rarely happens in football to be able to work at home um, it will probably never happen again um, and on a private level it was fantastic I was in my own apartment with uh, with my family every day and you know working in my city um, at a club where I'd been before so I'd, I knew many people many of the Many of the players I've known since they were little kids. Um, and uh, the coaching team, the group was also fantastic privately. We had a, a lot of fun together also outside of, outside of work. Um, Torsten is a different coach to Mirko, but also a very, very good tactician, I think. Um, I was happy to have been able to help them have a very good season last year. Their best for a few years. Um, and I took many things from, from this time. Uh, at summer or before summer, you agree with the... You signed contract with Spartak Trnava. Why Spartak Trnava? Because you said uh, you have a lot of chances to be a first coach in other teams. Why Spartak Trnava? Yes, but not in Barcelona. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, if I've, if I had a real offer from somewhere where I thought was bigger and more serious and more to the west, 
I wouldn't be here. Um, I lost from these almost two years where I didn't work. I lost almost six months believing in such a story. Um, I was a serious candidate to take over at a bigger club in a bigger league. Um, had many meetings and formal interviews and um, all these kinds of things. Um, and in the end, they didn't go with me. Um, so I learned to differentiate between here's the contract and yes, we like you, let's stay in touch, come next week, let's talk again. Yes. On the one side and on the other side, I had other offers, I would say, on a similar level overall. If you look at, you know, how good is the league, how big is the club, where is it and so on. Um, and from these limited options which I had, and this is the truth, um, I felt for many different reasons Spartak Ternava was the best place for me. Okay, thank you very much. We wish you all the best in Spartak Ternava. Thank you for the time you spent uh, with us uh, here in our TV show. Always, always gladly with you. Thank you. Today uh, in our show was uh, hit coach of Spartak Ternava Nestor Maestro. Je tu záver teda našeho dvojidelného cyklu, povedzme, s trénerom Nestorom El Maestrom. Ja veľmi pekne ďakujem, že ste celú diskusiu, alebo teda obe časti s našim novým trénerom sledovali a verím, že sa vidíme a počujeme pri ďalších programoch televízie Spartak TV. Dovidenia.